Hey, hello everyone and welcome to another Stamina RPG 4 video! I decided to play Death of the Dead Sea here. I shouldn't have much trouble with this one. And how do I know that anyway? Well, that's the topic of this video, is sustainability. See, the thing about it is, when you've seen the song at the very beginning, it looked pretty long, and if you look at that graph, it looks like there's a lot of stuff at that BPM, and there is. So how do I just automatically know I'm gonna pass this? Well, the thing about it is, when you s continually play at a certain beats per minute level, and you start to get comfortable with that sort of thing, it's like, hmm, I can now do this longer and longer and longer, and so the bar one of these days. Yeah, I didn't have the, the squeak. <laughs> I didn't have the bar squeak fix at this moment in time when I made the video. But anyway, so the more you play this sort of thing, the more you the more you get comfortable with it, and it's like, you know, this really isn't that bad. And then you're just doing it longer and longer and longer, as I said. And then suddenly, when you're really comfortable with it, suddenly it seems like length doesn't seem to matter nearly as much. I mean, yeah, uh, there, you, you can't do this sort of thing indefinitely, like, for 10 years straight or something like that, but, you know, y you can eventually tell that you'll be able to be doing this sort of stuff at, at, like, a more consistent basis and even be able to do multiples at this BPM in a row on the same day and stuff like that. So, how do you get to that sort of sustainability here, where you're just doing... 47 straight measures of 170 beats per minute. Like, this doesn't feel all that fast to me nowadays, but years ago it definitely would have been. So, when I did play this sort of stuff years ago, well, not, not necessarily stamina stuff, I mean just stuff in the 170 BPM range, or 340 if you're using 8th notes, it, it, it just felt like it was overwhelming, like I had to push really hard, I was really tense, it was hard to read this stuff, and so where, how did I get to this, and how could you get to this? Well, just keep playing at that BPM, like whatever you find that you can pass at that BPM level, just keep playing it until it becomes like second nature, and then you're, you're gonna find that because it's second nature, you're, you're able to play it multiple times in a row and you might not even find much of a challenge in it anymore. So then you're like, hmm, well, how can I challenge myself further at this? Well, find the song that's longer at the BPM, or has more steps at the BPM, and you know, just then start working on that. And eventually when you get to a point where it's easier, and it's second nature, then you extend it a little bit more, and etc, etc. But eventually you get to the point where you're not finding much challenge in that BPM, even after extending it a, a little bit more than what you did before, and you're like, wait, why, am, why does this so, feel so much easier? And then suddenly you're, you're just kind of coasting through something like this unexpectedly, like, where, when did I start being able to do this? Well, <laughs> when you started being able to do it is probably at a point that you don't even realize. That's why I said, when did I start being able to do this? And the reason why that is, is because when you get something down to something that's comfortable oh, bad technique today. and sustainable, yeah, I was, even I was having bad technique with that, it, it, it was still sustainable for me to do this. It, it's not one of my best scores, but it's still sustainable, and that, that's, that's what I'm talking about here, because it's like, even when you're not playing at your best, suddenly you're still able to pass this, like, because you're not struggling at it. It's just the thing of that, well, maybe, maybe I'm just messing up a little bit more than I usually would at this point, but it's, it's nothing, no big deal or anything like that, I can keep on going. And that's part of the sustainability aspect of getting the hang of particular BPMs, because when you get comfortable in that, there it just ends up solving a whole lot of problems that you had with it. Because when you're not comfortable with it, and you can only play at this BPM in short bursts, either because you're tensing up, or it just feels like it takes a lot of effort with maybe your current technique. You know, I, I always mention uh, improving your technique does wonders in uh, keeping yourself going longer. 
So I guess that also goes in with the sustainability thing as well. But the thing about it is, you just kind of end up building a better and more consistent technique that's more efficient and everything like that as you continue continually play something that you're comfortable with playing. And it just kind of ends up transferring over to other songs as well. So, even though that I sight read all these things nowadays, you know, it, it almost doesn't even feel like a sight read because I'm so used to seeing these sorts of patterns and uh, playing at this sort of speed that it just kind of is just reflex how it all huh? rolls together. And yeah, this kind of hit that second left arrow. Yeah, I, I flubbed I that. Guess I didn't, but... <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. As I said. As long as you can sustain yourself, not that big of a deal if you have some mistakes in your technique here and there. Just as long as it isn't like that you're going overboard with your pushing, because you know you gotta gotta hold your your own throughout the whole thing. So not that it takes practice to get to, but once you get it, suddenly you're as I said, you're doing stuff that you didn't think you would be able to do before because it's it just kind of just flows with you. <laughs> Because when you're doing, say, multiple 170 beats per minute songs in a row, or just one really long one like this, or let's say at, at a different level, um, say Ocean Lab Mega Mix, remember one, 132 beats per minute? That would get pretty tiring after a while, unless you're comfortable with it, but once you do get comfortable with that, suddenly you might find that you're able to do that 15 minute song, well I should say triplets, or th three songs in one type of song, you know, mix type of dealio, just all of a sudden you can do it. And it's a pretty cool feeling when you develop something that's sustainable like that because it just makes everything else seem more doable, even at higher levels. So you can just keep playing around in that beats per minute range until you get more and more comfortable with it, ju even jumping difficulties at times. And you'll also probably find out as you master the B BPM that you want to get comfortable with, that stuff of a higher BPM will be easier to master as well, because they aren't too far off the speed of what you're playing at here. Like, see, this one's at a peak of 11.33, but if we were to go up to, uh, I think, I think 75, or, or, uh, wait, no, 80, excuse me, 180 beats per minute, that would be, um, 12 steps per second. It's a little bit faster, but not so much faster that you'll probably be out of breath like you were before when you weren't playing or practicing like this. Eh. Yeah, my technique is pretty, pretty weird, but at least today it is. But yeah, I didn't have much trouble with that passing it as I expected. <clears throat> and with that, I'm going to end off the video here. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.